trying a method that will hopefully start the stream a little faster than usual. People have been complaining, Ole, that uh, it takes too long for the show to start. Okay, so there we go. That should be faster than usual. I'm delighted to have back on the program Ole Damagard. Ole, how are you today? I'm doing super good, thank you. And you? I'm good. You're looking very well, my friend, there in sunny Spain, correct? Yep. Very good. Now, today, Ole, you've prepared a special program for us about the soulless shoes of death. And everyone who's been watching Crowdsource the Truth and seen your many really impressive presentations and appearances here on the show knows that you've been pointing out the uh, sort of the signs and symbols of these false flag attacks and it seems like shoes are showing up everywhere right can you believe it it sounds like a joke but i tell you i got uh, i got quite a marathon lined up here for you so i ask for some stamina and patience and please hear me out Absolutely. and then see if what i present makes uh, any sense to you Mm -hmm. So you let me know whenever you want to go. Let's get we're ready. The show Ole going. has uh, prepared a PowerPoint presentation for us as usual. And just before we start with that, I do want to remind everyone that Ole and I are both engaged in independent journalism that requires the support of the viewing community. And people can support Ole's work by going to his website which of course is lightonconspiracies.com. It's just loading right now, there we are. You can purchase books that Ole has written. You can uh, contribute financially to his research. There's a shop right there that everybody can go to. Ole is one of the best known researchers and authors in the area of government corruption and political assassinations. He's written some fascinating books, so I would encourage everyone to go to lightonconspiracies.com and check out some of Ole's work over there. And uh, with that, Ole, why don't we get right into the PowerPoint? I know you've got quite a lot to share with us. I have indeed. Uh, I want to say also that I've got a newsletter on the website, and in this newsletter, uh, you, uh, if you sign up for it, you can go back in the archives and you can see over the years how I've been able to predict um, uh, more than 12 of these false flag operations and even stop some of them before they even happened. Uh, this newsletter is packed with images and so on where I point out the signs and this, uh, the clues of upcoming uh, false flag operations. And uh, so anyway, uh, where do I people hope, uh, find that, that, that newsletter? Them. They join as members. Is that it? No, uh, memberships and newsletter are the two different uh, sources I have of income. So they're two separate. But you can also there's also an option to buy both. Got it. So okay. uh, but it's a massive, massive website. And it's also like a safe house for other people that researchers that are being attacked uh, or being shut down on YouTube. Uh, people that really come forward with uh, truthful information, I say, if they're shut down, I tell them, bring on your videos, whatever, send it my way, I post it on my website, mm -hmm. and so that it doesn't get lost, just because YouTube wants to shut you down. Right. And so I have a whole lot of different uh, uh, articles from other people on a daily basis. So we got two to five new posts per day, new videos, new interviews. Uh, and the in intention has been to make this uh, website sort of a place where you can go and get um, a general idea of what's going on right now every single da day, every, all the important uh, things in one place. And then you can use that sort of like a starting place and then go out in different direction wherever you want. But uh, uh, a lot of people thank God, really likes it. And today, actually, is our birthday. It's ah. the first year, latest website. So I just had a little martini to celebrate, and uh, <laughs> I'm ready to, to go. Very good, very good. And so people should definitely okay. go to lightonconspiracies.com. Let's get right into the presentation, shall we? We shall indeed. Okay, great. So the thing, 
Uh, over the years, I put some 35 years into this, and uh, over the years, uh, like I mentioned many times on your show, I have kept bumping into these shoes, these very strange shoes uh, that are there right, left, and center uh, m many times when people are assassinated, alleged terror attacks, alleged mass shootings, and so on, alleged suicide bombings, alleged uh, uh, terrorist uh, whatever, their shoes in the images and it, it's always been a, a mystery to me what what is up with these shoes and the way i see myself is sort of like a self-educated crime scene forensic detective mm -hmm. and it, what i do is I, I try to go with an open mind to the crime scene um, many times I try to go on location. I've been to most locations here in Europe where these alleged attacks have happened, to several in the US and so on. And on location, try and see what actual evidence, what does the official story match up or whatever. And when you go to a crime scene uh, and the same pattern or the same kind of thing keeps repeating, that is sometimes a, a clue that you are looking for the same perpetrator. Hmm. Like if it's a serial killer, uh, sometimes they have their uh, special signature and you will start recognizing that signature and that will then hopefully lead you down the track towards the real truth and towards identifying who committed this thing. Modus so operandi or pattern and practice. That is it. And it, so it's, I believe that it's of very great value and importance to look for these clues. Are there any things that these things have in common? And if so, why, how, and who put it there? Hmm. So these shoes, uh, some years ago, I was contacted by an insider, a Freemason, who told me that the shoes left there were not left there just by coincidence, but they were actually Freemasonic symbols. And he said people on crime scenes or staged uh, terror attack uh, locations or whatever, one shoe off meant that it's a, a, a sign, no, that it's the sign of that this individual is doing this, uh, his part of this ritual voluntarily, just like in their own rituals. Huh. And two shoes means homage to the sacred space. Wow. Location where this ritual is being carried out. Wow. That's amazing. But also, but also I was contacted by another guy who, who an insider, I, I still don't know who, it, who he was, but he told me that I was doing a great job, but that I missed out on the clues. Hmm. And I said, what clues? I didn't have a clue what he meant. You <laughs> know? So he said, that the forces behind these operations are very, very aware of the law of karma. And so they believe that if they show us even in subtle ways what they're up to, then, and we do not react, then the bad karma is on our shoulders, not theirs. So it's in their interest to put uh, subtle um, clues about what they're up to mm. right in our face, right in front of us, but yet again hidden so that if we do not react then it's our, it's our fault you know so from that very point where i started seeing that my god if this, this is i couldn't believe it because i thought it's so stupid why on <laughs> earth would they give away clues about what they're doing that that just doesn't make sense but when he said this with the law of karma then sort of okay i can accept that even though i think it's a twisted way of understanding this law and I think these forces that have been up to so much mayhem over the years, I would think that on the day that they say bye bye from this earth, there is a very nasty experience waiting for them. Sure. But who am I to judge? I'm just uh, doing my part. <laughs> so once again, like when all of these operations takes place, the shoe, the shoe, the shoe keeps repeating and in ridiculous locations as well. For instance, uh, this is from a ladies' magazine, uh, hairdressers, how to stay safe from a terrorist attack. And well, then- now, Wait a minute, Ole, can you share your screen so we can see the shoe? I thought I had shared the screen. Oh, no, no, we're seeing you. Well, I have shared it, we, we try again. Sure, sorry about that. 
We're using a new. Please let me know when you see it. Because... Sorry. No, let me see when you see it because I've I've had my PowerPoint on all the time. Uh, if you go back you to appear in and click on that share screen sharing option, it should work. I'm sorry, Oli. We're trying a new uh, video chat thing here today because we've had some bandwidth issues in the past, and I think it's working well, but the screen share isn't up right now. But I'm, I'm sharing the screen now. Maybe try stop sharing and restarting it, and maybe that'll do it. I'm sorry. I do. Not a problem. I'll do it again. So I do screen share screen and yeah. share. Can you see that? Unfortunately, no. Let's see. Ah, yes, well, I can. That was my fault. I apologize, Ole. Let me bring this up full <laughs> screen. There we go. Now we've got you. I am so sorry, sir. Please carry on. No, no worry whatsoever. Okay, go. so here, for instance, is in a ladies magazine at a, as a hairdresser. There was this article about how to stay safe from terrorist attacks. And I would say the logical image to combine with an article like that would be like a bulletproof helmet or a vest or, or whatever, alarms or something like that. But here, the image is of shoes. Once again, the shoes. So in, in history, can you see the share screen yes, now? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. In history, when you go back, the shoes have been used for many, many, many years. I would say centuries when you go back, the shoes has been very important. And uh, especially when it comes to the Holocaust, where uh, these alleged death camps, when you see images of victims or the s images that symbolizes the death of these alleged victims, they, you often have like big mountains of shoes. And here to the left, you have in, in Budapest, in Hungary, there's this monument, these shoes are made of metal, and they're there as a constant remembrance of the horror that is said to have happened during that time. Hmm. Also, after the Balkan War, the shoes uh, and monuments of shoes were very important as well. Mm -hmm. And after the Iraq Wars, you have images as well here is, for instance, like there are thousands of pairs of shoes lined up in front of the very Freemasonic symbol, the Washington Monument, yeah. as a symbol for the fallen soldiers in the Iraq wars. And if I can please remind you of uh, General Wesley Clark, there's an interview with him, you can find it on YouTube, where he says that uh, just a few days after the, the attack on 9-11, Mm. One of his colleagues came and said, uh, have you heard the latest news? And he said, no, what? And his friend said, well, we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and then Iran. And he was like, what? Why on earth would we do that? Has it got anything to do with the, with the attacks on 9-11? And his friend said, no, I, nothing. But this is what we're going to do. I don't know why, but this is what our orders are. And it's been so that was in 2001. Accurate, hasn't and it? Please, uh, the countries: Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. Yeah. So we go on, and here, uh, for instance, there was a big uh, article about the, which countries have had the most terrorist attacks, and the image that they chose for this article was a shoe with blood. I ask you once again, what's a, what has a shoe to do with these terrorist attacks? We look at where did they actually happen? This is from 2016, but it's uh, more or less the same now. The, the, we got Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nigeria, Syria, Somalia, India, the Philippines, Yemen, Thailand, and then 10%, which is the rest of the world the NATO countries and Western Europe and so on, where these alleged attacks have happened. So very similar to the same uh, countries that General Wesley Clark was given an order to be part of attacking. The very same countries that there would be a benef benefit in demonizing, showing that these are crazy countries filled with terrorists. We need to go there for a reason to take out the terrorists for democracy or whatever they want to call it. Right. 
And then when you look in media, the shoes just keep repeating. It's there all the time. Here's after the Westminster Bridge attack in London. This is not a stage photo. This is a photo of a guy who was hit by a car uh, on the pavement here. It's just that they enlarged it. Well, I, I ask you, does that look like a real uh, leg, shoe? Look at underneath the shoe. It's more or less uh, new. There's no dust. There's no dirt, no nothing. Right. And the blob there, yeah. where does it come from? Yeah, does it come from the leg, out the from heel inside of the, the shoe? shoe? <laughs> Why exactly. hasn't it even gone down into the uh, asphalt, into the pavement? It's crazy. So let's have a look at some of these attacks. We were talking about the Westminster Bridge attack, and here, all over the place, uh, of uh, photos and videos of the alleged victims, of the alleged attacker, uh, and so on, they're, they're missing shoes all over the place. To the right here, there's this woman who's trying to save the life of this uh, gentleman here who is said to have been hit by the car. But of course, before she started to give mouth to mouth, she made sure to take off his shoes and place them very neatly on the payment as you do when you try and save somebody's life and so that it ends up right in the center of the photo of this photographer who just happened to be there we have the london bridge attack which was another attack here you got the forensic uh, but what is right in the center of the image what is right in the center a shoe we have the Manchester arena attack. And of course, if you've been uh, inside an arena where a bomb have exploded and there are lots of broken glass and bolts and nails from this uh, alleged bomb, of course, the first thing you think of is taking off your shoes and walk bare feet. Then the symbol is we stand together. What is there? A pair of shoes. This shoe to the right here is belong to a lady that is said to have been uh, injured by shrapnel from this bomb. But thank God she was saved by her cell phone. That is another repeating pattern is that people get saved by their cell tops. So that any time that uh, somebody places a bomb near you or shoots at you with an AR-15, no worries, just hold up your laptop and that <laughs> will save you. I would suggest, is it possible that we're seeing product placement here? Whoa. And here, the photo of this uh, lady that had been injured by the bomb is of her shoe with a piece of what looks like a nail put inside the shoe. And if you look at it, look at this shoe. The photographer came way later and the shoe is still totally fresh inside the shoe. Would that, is that a natural way uh, that this would happen? Here we have... Uh, the one of the, the victim, uh, a police officer that is said to have been stabbed to death outside Westminster, uh, the parliament in London. This is the Westminster Bridge attack. And when the ambulance arrived, of course, uh, the medical uh, staff did not try to save him. Instead, it was security guards and a British MP that were there giving him CPR, as you do when people have been receiving multiple stabs to the upper body and the neck. I'm sure CPR would do the trick. And this guy then uh, was the hero in the press. He was knighted afterwards. But this guy is very present in other alleged terror attacks. For instance, he was the one in charge when uh, British tourists were being shot at a beach in Tunisia. And he, was, he also had a brother that was killed at the Bali bombing. We're going to come back to these two events. So this guy uh, who appeared with what appeared to be like ketchup on his forehead, he was sort of in the press just said, uh, lifted him to the skies as an absolute hero. Hmm. I'm asking you, I've, I've asked people, ambulance drivers and medical staff and so on, they, they wouldn't let a guy like that near the victim. They would, he, they would just be back off, we take care of this. But this is not what we see here. Oh, Instead... Like we see this police officer's feet, they've taken off the shoes, they've taken off the socks, and they lift off these feet like they were a holy grail. Look at the, the, how this whole picture is staged. It looks like an old religious painting almost, like where you can hear the angel choir in the background, like, hallelujah. <laughs> 
you know, Ole, someone in the comments is talking and about... And appear on any photos, but he was there trying to um, save this police officer. And while saving, uh, trying to save him, he lost his shoes. Yeah. So the very next morning, he was invited to uh, British Morning TV. And in the studio, he arrived without shoes. I don't know about you, Jason, but is there a possibility that maybe he would have another pair at home? And so that when he arrived for the first time ever on national TV, that maybe he could have put on some other shoes. But instead, he came bare feet and his feet were part of the conversation about this heroic uh, uh, attempt to save this guy. Very bizarre. Here we have uh, a recent, uh, it's called the Parson Green attack, where there was a bomb going off inside a train. They claim awful operation. The alleged bomb that was filmed was a plastic bucket with a few electric wires, a uh, plastic uh, uh, bag inside of it, and a few papers that somebody had lit. There was absolutely nothing, no explosion, no victims, no nothing. Absolutely 100% staged. And, but the aerial photo of uh, the train station, what did it show? A pair of shoes outside the train. And outside in the street, where you just see the, the action there with the fire uh, vehicles and the police cars and so on, what is there? A pair of shoes. Somebody had just happened to drop his shoes off, as you do. Mm. Here's another a, a case uh, of a young girl that disappeared that has caused the media all over the world to, yeah. to go into a frenzy almost. What happened to Madeleine McCann? Yeah. And there's a lot of things pointing in towards, I would suggest, international pedophile trafficking thing uh, with high level politicians involved in this case and so on. So the BBC had a, a story recently about what, it, what is happening and what is the update. And what was the image was illustrating this article? A pair of shoes. Crazy. It doesn't make any sense at all. No. Here you have, uh, there's a whole wave of stabbings going on. I think they're up to 72 within a month or something like that. Absolutely crazy. And every single time that I look into these things in the crime scene photos are nothing but a shoe. The top photo is from a recent accident at an air show where they said that a plane crashed and people were injured and cars uh, took fire and so on. So what is the illustration? A shoe. I used to work as a journalist and a photographer. Had I come back from a job from an air crash and with a photo of a shoe, I mean, I would be kicked out. My, I would lose my job. And for sure, the chief editor would never use that image. Right. But here is that is the image used. And when the British MP Theresa May celebrated Christmas last year, what did she put on top of her Christmas tree? a shoe. Are we starting to see some kind of strange pattern here? We have the French attacks where the Charlie Hebdo, that's the top one to the left. Mm -hmm. You have the two shooters that uh, went out and killed a police officer on a, on a payment. At least that's the official story. Uh, we managed to track down this dead police officer. He's doing great. He lives in Buenos Aires. Whoa. He's a Mossad agent, and uh, he was paid six hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars for his uh, uh, appearance in this drama. Wow! How and do we know he's that? He's allowed back oh, in right. France within the next four years, I believe. You spoke anyway, with the him? two shooters, uh, when they ran out of the car, there is a trainer right outside the uh, the uh, door on the passenger side. But when the shooters came back, both of them had both shoes on. The shooter on the uh, passenger side picked up the shoe, threw it in the back seat, and then the car raced off. So the shoe was part of the whole thing. Underneath that, we have uh, Nike trainers. It's more or less always Nike from the November the 13 attack, where lots of photos were taken of shoes abandoned in the street. Top right, another attack. Uh, I mean, uh, flowers, candles, and a shoe. And underneath, there were some riots afterwards where you see here in the middle, a shoe. But look, what is above it? it? That looks like a character from Phantom of the Opera. 
or Freemasonic, uh, like eyes wide shot character with a cape and a mask. And what is that photo? But that was shared, shared in international media from these riots. I tell you, totally staged photo in my world. Here we have the Bataclan massacre in Paris as well. So what is the image that symbolizes this? You got posters in the background with what look appears like running blood. We got uh, one that talks about the Charlie Hebdo one. And by the way, I've been informed by a French guy that uh, Je suis Charlie, with the slogan, this is really a marketing slogan that uh, was spread up right after the Charlie Hebdo attack. Je suis Charlie, it means I am Charlie, but actually it's slang. And what it actually stands for is I'm an idiot. So everybody who says Je suis Charlie is actually saying I'm an idiot. And uh, well, I think that uh, says it all. Hmm. Truck attacks, where a truck is said to have uh, uh, ran into a crowd and uh, killed 84 people, 202. That was the official story the first night. After one week, the 202 victims were suddenly 303. And after four, two weeks, it was 404. Is that the number of injured could go up? Are these people who went home and after two weeks so noticed, oh my God, I broke my leg, what happened? Oh, it was the truck attack. I need to go to the hospital. Is that how these hundreds of new victims appear? Or is it part of a PSYOP, part of false flag operations where the whole thing is to spread fear and where the bigger the numbers are, the more emotional impact they can get out of these operations? What are, Ole, shoes, shoes, are you shoes, able to shoes. hear me? Up top left, there are two women there mourning. There's a dead victim with a, a sheet over. And what is on top of it? A black shoe. A pigeon, the symbol of peace, and a shoe. And I think now they started to, the more I and other people have started pointing to shoes, the more and more they've started to use another symbol, I would suggest, the bicycle. I started to see more and more bicycles in the background of these uh, operations. Oh, what is going on, Jason? There is a very, very important uh, film called Wag the Dog. I can very much recommend with Robert De Niro and Dustin Hoffman. Mm -hmm. And this, the theme in this film is that there is a scandal, a sex scandal inside the White House. The president is uh, abroad. And uh, uh, he's left sort of the building and called in experts to sort this mess out before he comes back home. So Robert De Niro is uh, sort of a fixer. Whatever the problem is, call Robert De Niro, he will sort it out. So he comes in and he sees that, oh my God, this, this is a massive scandal. So we need a massive distraction. So he calls in his friend, uh, Dustin Hoffman, who's a Hollywood producer, who's an, uh, He's used to make up the scenarios and screenplays and timelines and whatever. And together, what they create is a, a fake war against Albania. They leak out information to media saying that, uh, oh, there's been terrorists uh, in Albania that have been planning an attack to the US. So because of all of this, we had to defend ourselves. So there is a war now with Albania. Absolutely nothing in real life is happening, but in the media, suddenly there is a war going on. And so they keep on uh, building up the story and they need a hero. So they call uh, in a war veteran played by Woody Harrison, whose, what, whose name is Old Shoes. They, so uh, that's what they call him. They even got Willie Nelson come in, make a song that is called The Old Shoes. And they, they recorded, so it sounds like it was recorded in the 1920s. And that, together with the whole story, the song and all of that, it became some massive campaign. But also they go out and they, they, start, they need to sort of do something to get the, the public, Joe in the street, involved. And so they, they throw, start to throw out shoes up in the trees over telephone lines and so on. And this starts a whole thing that across the nation where people uh, out of sympathy and so on uh, and uh, 
patriotism starts throwing shoes up there. So we've got shoes, shoes, shoes. Still him, Jason? Oh, Ole, we're losing you a little bit. Ole, can you hear me? Ole. Can you hear me, Ole? Can you hear me? Jason. Yeah. I think, I think you lost me. Let's see what we can do to get it back. Sorry, Ole. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Ole? Can you hear me? Hmm. I was hopeful that this might help us, but... Ole, can you hear me? Let's do this. Let me try to reconnect to Ole. Let's reconnect on Skype. We'll reconnect on Skype. Sorry about that, everyone. It's always difficult when uh, technical problems arise. We'll get Ole back here in just a second. Jason? Hey, Ole, I'm very sorry. I was hopeful that that would work better for us. Your presentation was going up until the moment that we just stopped. The only problem is you could not hear me. So we can carry on from exactly where you left off. So are we, we're going to continue here on Skype instead, yeah? Let's do that because the other thing wasn't working, I don't think. Okay, so... Uh, da -da -da -da. I apologize, Ole. Everyone is very interested. No. We had some questions from the chat. People are asking, uh, what about when Hillary Clinton collapsed on 9-11 and her shoes remained there? If you wait, I'm going to come there. <laughs> very good. So, so how, how long did you, did you we, see this one from Nice? Uh, we, uh, up until you started saying, hey, Jason, are you there? We had everything you said. Yes, we saw that. So we saw that. Okay. Yeah. So you can just push that Skype it. window all the way down to the bottom, and then we can carry on. So did you hear this story about yep. Wag the Dog as well? Yes, we did. Excellent. So the shoe, the shoe, the shoe. And uh, one of my friends, uh, whistleblower uh, Cody Snodgrass, mm -hmm. he told me that he thinks that there's there's an uh, even a, a more uh, because he said that uh, with his experience within MK Ultra, one of the things when a, an individual is broken down uh, to be able to be used as an asset, a mind control asset, what they do is that they they put these this individual through absolute horrific things like. Uh, torture, sexual abuse, uh, rape, you name it. And the intention is to split the personality so that the, the soul is just, there's no way for the soul to go. And so it splits into another personality that can then be controlled by these controllers. But what they do is, in the meantime, while they, they um, take this uh, victim through all of these things, they hold up symbols in front of them that will later be used as trigger symbols, meaning that in the end, when they've broken down an individual totally, in the end, it's enough just to show the symbol and boom, that is so traumatic for that person that he just splits into the other, the second personality or whatever that can be controlled. Right. So Cody was suggesting that here we have all of this horror that has been presented for so many years and every single time we go into this emotional, oh my God, that can't be true. There's the shoe. That even rhymed. But uh, <laughs> so that if you, if you, I mean, your, your conscious mind doesn't notice the shoe, but your, your subconscious mind is very aware of everything. So he said he believes that this shoe is sort of a mass mask mind control trigger does that make sense yes it does and we've seen many and of these can't... triggers for mk ultra victims like sirhan sirhan had the woman in the polka dot dress that people suspect 
may have been a trigger. Yeah. The Batman uh, movie theater shooter you and I have discussed, he may be an MK Ultra victim. Yeah. So I ask you, Jason, is it l possible or even plausible that alleged terror terrorists in faraway countries like Sudan, Afghanistan, out in desert areas and so on, could control what Western media would publish? Could they force the editors at the BBC or CNN to use specific images? The New no. York Post, Washington Post, the New York Times. I ask you, that is a question that I think is valid. Mm. So let's look at some other countries. Here we have uh, the truck attack in Sweden last year. Mm -hmm. There was a second, shoe, shoe, shoes, where the victims are. There was a second uh, truck attack that followed because uh, according to Chip, Ta Chatham and, uh, Chip Tatum, another CIA whistleblower who's been involved in false flags, he said that sometimes if the operation is not giving the required emotional impact in the, in the public, uh, then you need to add to the whole uh, impact by another. It's normally sort of like a mini version of the same attack, but in a smaller version. And here we had a second truck attack. Here the, it's the white truck here. And what is right above that on the aerial photo? It's a, a telephone line with a pair of shoes. I lived yeah. in Stockholm for years. I never saw tennis shoes over the telephone lines or anything. I've and seen them in after Brooklyn. That, there was, yeah, but these shoes have been used in in for drug uh, drug trafficking or yes. drug dealers or it indicates the shoots an have area become of drug more. activity yeah yeah exactly so here there were some riots in sweden as well and okay to the for the riots here there was a photo of an ambulance and in front of it a pair of shoes as a photographer press photographer your job is to get an image that can add to the article and if you had been told you i need a photo of an ambulance wouldn't you get rid of these shoes that, that are so distracting and then maybe change the angle or just yeah. move the shoes zoom in or something or is it the shoes we go to ireland here is, uh, there's a recent shooting in ireland what do we see there a shoe there's a recent alleged murder a shoe here is some shoes from alleged victims from bombings in the in the past articles about the mass shooting in norway shoes we go to denmark here's the alleged shooter at the copenhagen shooting which, which i predicted one month before it happened the shooter is lying there two shoes on and a shoe next to him that was a whole stage thing he was hit by 38 shots they say not a drop of blood except a little on his hip and so the whole thing just uh, sucked and here is a recent photo from denmark where 65 shoes symbolizes the death the number of dead people due to cut downs in the public services but one it's the shoe equals death type of thing that we're with of being fed subconsciously here in italy there was this story recently about a young couple that kicked a homeless guy to death and then put him on fire. Jeez. Soto from the story, a pair of slippers. Here are some riots from a football riot in, um, uh, I can't remember where that was, but the photo accompanied the, uh, that accompany, uh, accompany, oh, that uh, was together with the article, a small little mountains of shoes. And many of these uh, riots and stampedes at football stadiums, fires that breaks out and mm. where people are killed, I tell you, are gladio operations, as far as I've been able to find out. Mm. There to inflict fear, that's the whole idea, to inflict fear, random violence, random acts of, of horrific things, um, spontaneous death from any type of anger, meaning that you're not safe anywhere, not even when you go on a Sunday afternoon at a football game to relax. You know, and Ole, one the, of our the, viewers here on Periscope is pointing out that so many of the shoes are Nikes. What do you think it of that? It is Nike. I, I, I thought I mentioned that. It's Nike all the time, more or less. Yeah. So I'm going to come back to that. It's a very yeah. good observation. Nike, Nike, Nike. So here in Belgium, shoe, shoe, shoes. We've got Spain. Are you kidding me? 
terror attacks, shoo, shoo, shoo. Look at the photo to the right. I mean, is that sandal there? Is it discreet in any way or form? I think not. We've got Turkey. Here is a mass shooting at a nightclub on New Year's Eve a few years ago, uh, a massacre. So what is the shoe? What is the image we're showing? Shoes. Here's another terror attack. Shoes. Some other attack. All of these are different attacks. Here, like you said, Nike shoes, Nike shoes. And this one was the Ankara uh, terrorist attack at the airport. So, of course, the airport, but here, part of the image. We lost your audio there for a I'm second, Ole. Here at the airport, what are we seeing? It's a Nike again. It's Nike again. It's all of these are Nike. Yeah. And of course, Nike is located in Lebanon. Oregon, where Quinn Michaels has told us there's quite a lot of uh, occult activity. I wonder if there's any connection between Nike uh, and, and that aspect of it. I'll have to ask Quinn about that. Please do. And also, the, I'm going to come back to the founder of Nike, who's a former military guy and so oh, on, and who's yes. also come up to the surface recently in a different way. But here in Lebanon, we have the same thing. Shoe, shoe, shoes from all of these alleged terror attacks. But they made this, uh, up the top right one, they made this, uh, I don't know what to call it, sculpture as a symbol of resistance and liberation of Lebanon. And I thought that's quite interesting because uh, what does that show you? Is that these people in Lebanon that knows about these operations using this, the shoe as a symbol that they're sort of giving it back or returning, saying we want to be liberated from the shoe. Huh. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Then we got Iraq here. Shoe, shoes. Here again, look at the color of the blood. That is very recently happened, if it's real blood. And then you have a lady's shoe almost put on top. No blood stain, no nothing. The shoe to the right, discreet? I think not. Benghazi, Libya, where, uh, well, the US has a lot to do with that one. So right. let's go and take photos of the crime scene. A rubber boot and a Wellington one and, and shoes. You got Ukraine. We go to Tunisia. Here it is said that there was an attack on British tourists in Tunisia, where this MP that we saw at the Westminster Bridge attack, he was the one that was in, in charge of the situation. And here, what are the photos were being shown? Sandals, um, books with blood on it, and shoes, flowers. Iran, here's a recent uh, assassination. And also, uh, just uh, yesterday, I think, uh, there was an, uh, there's a big thing in Iran now, at least they say, that uh, Nike has refused to deliver shoes to the Iranian uh, football team for huh. uh, world championship. Wow. I don't know. I'm just pointing it out because what is going on? Here we have Pakistan. These are, it's not from the same event. All of these are from different events, but images shared here. Here we have an amazing proof of reincarnation because in 2014, there was a mass shooting in Pakistan at a school there. Lots of children uh, where they said they were killed. And one of the children killed was Noah Postner, who actually died two years earlier in Sandy Hook. Oh, wow. How, how, how is that possible? Mm. If you look at this, uh, the major main image here, that is from a BBC uh, news report from Pakistan, where in the background you see the exact photo of Noah Postner. But it was more, it was in multiple places. It was not the same poster, but his photo kept being shown everywhere. And Lenny Posner, the dad of, of uh, Noah Posner, was approached. And uh, but instead of being, being like, how is it possible that my boy survived and then died two years later, more or less on the exact day uh, of his death? 
he tried to sue and shut down people who asked questions. Really? And this woman, uh, this BBC reporter, is he, she has almost a look-alike after the Parkland, Florida shooting, where there's an alleged mother there who looks very similar to this one. Huh. So I don't know. But here we have a photo from the school where these children have been said to have been shot. So, I mean, it looks like an absolute massacre. And what have we got in the center? Shoes. Yemen. How surprising. Syria. Nike. Nike shoes, Nike, Nike shoes. shoes in Syria. Wow. Nike. Can you see? It's like most yeah. of them. And look at the color of the blood. That is super fresh blood. This is not like hours later when the when the press comes there. So what are we looking at? Is this real blood? Are these real pictures of terror attacks or are they just totally staged? That's right. the question. Right. Uh, have these we're looking here, there's an alleged uh, attack on a Catholic church in Nepal. What's there? Why tell me, uh, give me a logical reason why the shoe w would be in focus here, not the church or right. anything else. That's, that's the most uh, outstanding feature there is the photographic composition. It's almost like an ad for the shoe or an artistic photograph about the shoe. Exactly. Here we have a Russian crash site. There's so many of these airplane crashes that are, there's so many weird questions around that. That uh, And here, what is the same, what is the image of a shoe? Yeah. We have Egypt. Here's another airplane crash. What is the photo taken of? The shoe. And then the terrorists uh, that carried out this or uh, some other events, they were executed, it said. So the image that was shown from the execution was this very staged photo, I would say, of somebody hanging or lynched and then a pair of feet with sandals on. Weird. And I don't know, but I tell you, if you've seen somebody being hung yeah. or hanged, they kick off, they kick, you know, and the shoes would just be flow, fly off. Yeah. That is not a real photo. Here, more yeah. from from the same country. Do they look familiar in any way or form? Hmm. It's overwhelming, Ole. Palestine, Israel. Here is a pizzeria that was blown to pieces. So let's take a photo of the pizzeria that was uh, attacked. Glass, broken glass, and a pair of shoes. We look here, they, they are hunting down uh, Palestinian terrorists. What do we see? Shoes, 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 shoes. Shoes, Palestinian, Israeli. We got Bali, Indonesia. What are the chances, Jason, that the shoe is right there in the blown up um, nightclub here? Well, I've the been fact to that they're Indonesia all in the foreground is such an outstanding coincidence, it seems impossible. I totally agree. But I'm not the one who took them. I'm not the one who published them. I'm not the one who chose right. that that is the image we're going to use for this article. And this Bali bombing, that is a major one. I would very much like to do a show on that one because that is a major one and most people haven't even heard of it. We go to Thailand where there's a lot of terrorists as well. And for instance, we go to, back to Bali. The bomb went off. And be, almost before the local police were on site, there were 17 FBI agents there with FBI co uh, uniforms on. In Bali. On location in Kuta, Bali. How, oh how, oh how is that possible? Oh, wait, isn't, lever, uh, uh, is, isn't the FBI supposed hours, to operate uh, domestically within the United States? What are they doing in Bali? Thank you, Jason. Thank you. But that is in the old days because now they have spread all over the place. And here in Thailand, look at the top right image. That is from a, of, of a site where a suicide bomb is taken. But the, the technical equipment they're using, can you see what it says on it? FBI. Oh, wow. Kenya. Here, alleged uh, shootings in, in, at universities and in supermarkets. 
airports, uh, suicide bombers. What is the image of? Nigeria. And Ole, where are you getting all these images from? Just news articles and websites that are reporting on these stories? It's an overwhelming number of images of shoes. Go search for them yourself. Yeah, I've been looking everywhere. And over the years, I've just kept collecting and collecting and collecting. And it's just grown on me. It's like, how is this possible? So I started becoming more and more focused on these shoes. Here we have Somalia. Here we have Afghanistan. I mean, look at the top right one. What is the photo of? Is it the story of a shoe? My personal story, you know, right. is that what they're talking about? Is that an, a personal interview with a shoe? Or what is it? Here, Afghanistan again. Look at the color of the blood. That is not natural blood after a while, you know. Yeah. They all seem very staged. India, here we have um, a riot, a stampede and a footbridge. Uh, lots of people killed, they say, photo of shoes. Here's an alleged terror attack in Mumbai, shoes, blood and shoes. Here's the shoes of the terrorist that blew himself up. It's not even the same pair, but the shoes are there, blood and then an empty shell. New Zealand, on New Zealand, the shoes are very important as well, but here they symbolize the, the number of suicides instead, but they still come out as a symbol of death. We go to Australia. The shoes, the Nike shoes, the Nike shoes. Canada, the recent attacks here, do you know? What, what are we yeah. looking at here? Well, those look Deadly like Adidas. Attacks. So, sorry? Those look like they might be Adidas shoes. Most of the time it's Nike. Yeah. Now you can see that on the side it's Nike. Oh, really? And wow. then, can you see that uh, on, uh, the, on the front, uh, the one closest perhaps. to the center, you can see the, the Nike symbol. And then uh, they've been very kind. If you look at the stomach of the victim, they left his cell phone there just in case he got an emergency call or something like that. Wow. <laughs> Here... You have, yeah, and another victim they carried away and they put the big medical uh, bag right on top of the head of the victim. I haven't put that in here, but I can show you that afterwards. Oh. Here is in Toronto as well. Shoe, 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 shoes. Not the same shoes. Hmm. Japan recently, Benjamin, uh, Mr. Terror himself, Netanyahu, invited the Japanese PM for dinner. And so what was the deserved What are they doing serving? with shoes on a table? That is such an insult to a Japanese, you cannot even yes. imagine. And here the dessert was served in a, in a shoe. In Japan, so, Ole, you can't even wear your shoes into someone's home as a guest. If you go to a Japanese home, they will have uh, house shoes laid out and you take your shoes off and put on the slippers. That's shocking to see a shoe on a table in a Japanese diplomatic meeting. I know. So what is going on here? Is this a dinner or is, is it intimidation? Is that sort of a, a very, very serious insult or saying also you, you're going to have it if you don't... Uh, get in line. I don't know what the message is here, but this is very, very weird, I would suggest. So, of course, this all happened in other countries where people are sleeping. So, it, I mean, it could never, ever happen in the States now, could it? Let's have a look. Well, I'm sure it's happening like crazy. Fred Edwards comments that in 1998, Bill Clinton signed the Joint Terrorism Task Force into law, essentially joining the CIA and the FBI. So perhaps that explains why the FBI is operating internationally so much like that. And we know Robin Gritz was the liaison between the CIA and the, well, the FBI and the CIA. Okay. So here we have the, the shoe bomber. We have shoe bomb scare. We have shoes outside the Capitol. Uh, 
we have, let's go back in history here a while. Here at the Oklahoma City bombing museum, what is in the museum? Shoes. Hmm. We have You've got a viewer many on different... Periscope, Ole, who's in Japan, who agrees that's ridiculous. I know, I know. But here, so many alleged crimes, so many alleged uh, drive-by shootings, uh, violent uh, murders and stuff like that. I'm, I'm in contact with police officers both in the US and in Sweden. And I've asked about these crimes and they say the crime statistics is totally incorrect. It's so pumped up with fake events there to get more funding and also create more panic in the in the in among the citizens of the country you know to keep us in fear mode so so many times when you look at these alleged uh, drive-by shootings or whatever they're photos of shoes here's u.s homicides are taken from different crime scenes i mean look at these photos are they not more or less identical to the other ones meaning I mean, the top right one, what is that? Is that jam on a, on a carpet? Here we have LAPD crime photos. I mean, an arm with a, with a knife and next to it, he put his shoes, hmm. shoes lying in the street. How, I ask you, if you are shot or, or uh, what do you call, attacked or assaulted uh, with a knife or a, a bat or whatever, Will you, if somebody hits you, will you fly out of your shoes? If you're shot, will you just be, will the force be so powerful that your trainers will fall off? I, I don't know. Probably that is in, in the world of cartoons. Yeah. Well, I think if you get hit and by then, a car or something, that can happen. But uh, none of these scenarios. I've, I've heard about train and car accidents. I've spoken yeah. to police officers and they said, yes, it happens, but very rarely. So here we also, there was a whole series of human feet being washed up on different areas in, oh. in the US. At least that is what we're being told in media. And most of the time, Nike shoes. Hmm. Here, gunman shoots two men outside Queens. The photo of a Nike trainer, what has that anything to do with a, a shootout in Queens? The, the bottom one uh, to the left is from Portland, Oregon, crime scene, two Nike shoes and a sandal. Down below, Brooklyn team, 15 shot and a pair of trainers. Here are some other alleged uh, murders and uh, very strange uh, uh, events in the US where the trainer, the trainer, the shoe, the shoe. Do you remember the Heaven's Gate mass suicide? Yes. Which was a, a sect that was waiting to be picked up by aliens or whatever, and then they committed suicide. All of them wearing Nike shoes. Uh, all of the victims were carrying Nike shoes, identical ones. So even Nike, I think they made a model uh, that was named Heaven's Gate, or at least they were using it there in their uh, marketing. Wow. Here after 9-11, I, I know people, I've been contacted by people in, in New York who were there after the attacks on 9-11. Yeah. And they said that they were walking around there and on the, on the pavement, sometimes there were big heaps of shoes there. And they were like, they thought, where did, where did they come from? Are they from the victims? That's what they thought. But when you look at this, you have to ask yourself, was that part of the psyop there, part of sort of triggering the fear, fear, trauma, and so on. Here Ole, we have- Sorry, I don't mean to break your flow, but while you're on the subject of Heaven's Gate, and this is going to, I don't know, but Vice has an article that says, the Heaven's Gate Nikes and the sneakerheads who collect them, and they're showing these uh, Nike Heaven's Gate sneakers. And in Vice, you and I were just talking about that. Sorry, please carry on. We'll come back to that. Oh, please, please send me the link there. I yeah. tell you, uh, Vice, that magazine, I totally distrust them. Yeah. I truly believe that they are totally part of intelligence agency uh, things. They try to set me up. 
they were part of the Bataclan massacre follow-up interviews, and they've just set up a side thorn and his partner, Conspiracy Granny, who were arrested while being filmed by the Vice crew. I warned Sidethorn to go to that interview because uh, I told him, and he went anyway, it was an ambush, and now he's facing 30 years or more in prison. And uh, Conspiracy Granny, uh, it seems like she's going to be, tra- she's in jail or, as well, that she's going to be transferred to a mental institution for two, three months, and after Whoa. that, she's facing 20 years in prison. Wow. So these people really need our support at the moment because things are getting out of hand here. Yeah. So Columbine, high school shooting. Are you kidding me? This was the, one of the first major ones. And what do we see here to the left? The shoes were there as well. You were mentioning the Batman Aurora shooting. What is there? The AR-15, why do they always use the AR-15? Because there are many other weapons that have exactly the same firepower and so on, but this one is the only one that looks military, as far as I know, so it's perfect to look scary. Well, it's 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 my understanding, Ole, that an AR-15 is a category of gun, kind of like a pickup truck is a category of vehicle, and they just want to ban those, so I think that's why they're always using AR-15. Yeah, but this AR-15 is a specific model as well that we keep seeing uh-huh. at this those. Maybe you're, you're correct. Uh, I st- if so, I stand corrected. But here we have the shooter is said to have been in a Batman outfit. So he dropped his gun and his pink sandals. So, so was he wearing <laughs> like pink sandals and a Batman outfit? It's a good look. I don't know. Maybe it matches. <laughs> I don't know. But... Uh, So we got the Boston Marathon bombing. Running shoes are potent silvers of Boston bombing. Look at the photo. Look here. Here's one of the articles about the Boston Marathon bombing. Wow. We will finish the race. The stories behind these shoes. Mm. You got in the street after the bombings, the shoes. You got, they've even got a monument built inside a museum built out of shoes. We go to San Bernardino, the alleged uh, terror attack there. Crime scene photos, Uh, we got weapons, bags and shoes. We go to Sandy Hook, lots of messages written on shoes to remember the victims. Nike shoes, the Orlando Pulse shooting. Shoes, 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 shoes. Even in the U.S. Senate, they were showing images uh, of shoes while discussing gun control. And these shoes up to the left were worn by a doctor at one of the hospitals. And there was some blood from one of the victims that dripped on his trainers, his Nike trainers. So they became this symbol for gun control and even used in the U.S. Senate. The Manhattan truck attack. We have here uh, the guy who is dressed very much in Pepsi Cola colors, uh, Pepsi uh, things in the background as well. There's another suicide bomber there that failed, but right in front of him, shoes. There's shoes outside the attacker's home. And also they were warning about the Islamization of different groups. So, of course, the image they chose was shoes and then no shoes allowed. So we go to the Texas church shooting. He had said that the hero, they love the heroes, he, uh, when the guy went in and started shooting at the church, this uh, neighbor heard it and he ran out without his shoes. It says here, Texas church shooting hero, left his shoes, picked up a gun, and then went after the gunman and killed him. And of course, that's the shooting that's most connected to Scythorn, right? The Sutherland Springs? Yeah. Here we have Pizzagate. There's a lot of shoes here also, and the symbolism of shoes going all the way into the Vatican, possible connection into the Vatican with red shoes. And red shoes, yes. Yes. We have the Charlottesville uh, car attack. Here you can see the car that crashes right into the crowd, they claim, and shoes, shoes, shoes around there. So... Let's have a look at uh, uh, the Charlottesville attack. This is 
after the car is said to have driven right into the crowd, killed one woman, that was, uh, her name was Heather Hayes, that wasn't even close to she was standing next to the car uh, she wasn't even hit by the car her mother said that she died from a heart attack but anyway it's claimed that he killed her so this is when the, the car reverses away from the scene yeah a lot of people were bringing Did that you up see that? That they, yep that they had seen the shoe and it's bouncing yeah okay so Hollywood I mean some people say in Hollywood have told me that uh, you cannot get your budget uh, to a movie before it's been approved by Pentagon. So here, this is Mission Impossible number three. Check it out, Tom Cruise, here we go. Hmm. Did you see it? Yeah, the shoe. Now, you know, Mission Impossible obviously represents, you know, some of the biggest budget movie making in Hollywood. And, you know, something, Ole, that Quinn and I have been looking at quite a bit is the ties between Scientology, which obviously Tom Cruise is uh, almost a spokesperson for, and the Process Church, which is a, uh, an occult, you know, satanic uh, kind of a thing. It, um, you know, there's a show actually premiering tonight in the United States on CBS called Strange Angel, which is uh, based on the true life story of Jack Parsons, who was a NASA JPL rocket scientist during the time that NASA was first coming about. And he was close friends with L. Ron Hubbard, who was the founder of Scientology. And both Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard were involved in you know, occult, ritualistic sex parties and wife swapping and all kinds of kind of like dark magic stuff that I think most people find pretty uh, out of the ordinary and possibly linked to some of the things you're bringing up today. You better ask uh, Quinn about these things. I don't know. But mm. uh, here we have the Las Vegas shooting. And here, just like normal, you see the guy in the middle here, he's been part of being shot at. Uh, and so, so of course, you take off your boots and walk home in your shoe, in, in your socks. Please notice his girlfriend next to him, where you see the pattern uh, of her shorts are the American flag. This is one thing, when these false flag attacks happen, and uh, if you're there and you're freaking out, please look for somebody uh, dressed like the American flag, you will know that he's part of the operation and he can help you, assist you with if you need toilet or drinks or whatever, because huh. this is the standard procedure every single time. Ole, Here, what about that photo? I'm sorry again to interrupt, but do you recall this photograph of Seth Rich, the DNC staffer who was allegedly killed, uh, who appears in a famous photograph allegedly from 4th of July, where he's wearing a total American flag outfit. Do you no. know that? No. Oh, well, I'm No, but sometimes that. these things happen, of course, naturally. Yeah. But when you see, keep repeating, repeating, repeating. And here uh, you have survivor's boots become iconic image of hope. Hang on two seconds. Sure. Incoming phone call. Uh -huh. So Ole is giving no, us one of his patented presentations on the overwhelming array of shoe imagery related to terror attacks, knife attacks, mass shootings, etc. all around the world. It really is quite amazing. Truth Seeker right now is telling us that 33 UFOs hiding behind Comet Hale Bop were supposed to save the Heaven's Gate souls. So there's that number 33 showing up again, Ole. Yeah. But here you have survivor's boots become iconic image of hope. And the boots are exactly the colors of the American flag as well. You got multiple shoes here in the streets. So we go to the Parkland school shooting here, the time cover where the color. Color -coded, they, the color codes that are used at this uh, time here is purple and orange. These are the colors that are used in all of these operations. And here on the cover, there's one girl here, bare feet. And uh, to, the, 
To the left here, you see a CNN newscast. Uh, breaking news. NBA rookie uses his shoes to speak out uh, on the Florida school shooting. But I mean, they, even, they don't even mention who this NBA rookie is. And, and is this breaking news that somebody has scribbled on his shoe and gun violence? And then it says on the other shoe was written, pray for Parkland. Yeah. So we go emotional as well. Mm. We go to the Santa Fe school shooting very recently here. What yeah. do we see? Shoes, yeah. shoes. And then the shoes have become a, a symbol for gun control now where recently there were 7,000, that's 14,000 shoes uh, placed outside the capsule. Here you see down to the right here, um, youth gun violence victims to be honored. Look at the image there. Is that shoes from um, students or high school uh, youth people? No, they're baby shoes. Once hmm. again, they go emotional. Yeah, very weird. So here, it's exactly the one you talked about where Hillary right. was being led into the van or somebody that we think is Hillary because you never see her. You just see somebody with a similar haircut or, or a wig that is led to the van and then did she die? Did she have an attack or whatever? And this is what was left on the pavement, her shoe. Hmm. Then you have the recent YouTube shooter. Uh, which seems to be like a 3D animated figure. I mean, he, she doesn't even seem real in many of the videos. And what is the image in live TV streaming from the news? The shoe. We have the murder of MP Joe Cox in England. That was right before uh, the Brexit uh, referendum. And this was like a copycat murder of the Swedish Prime Minister Anna Lind that was just two days before the referendum about the currency uh, being changed from the Swedish krona to the euro. And when they couldn't, through propaganda and logic reason, persuade the population of Sweden, I would suggest they went, uh, they meant emotional. So they killed the person that was standing up for the euro and she was stabbed very brutally. She, her, her name was Anna Lind, she was 36 years old, two kids. And that's almost swayed the poll so that uh, the euro went through, but they, it didn't succeed and the Sweden still had the krona. Then when the Brexit referendum came in England, they did an exact identical operation there where this young politician, 36 years old, with two children, identical, is were brutally stabbed, identical. Uh, and here we have again from the alleged crime scene, the shoes. Mm. The shoes, the shoes. And Quinn Michaels would tell us that 36 is an encoded 9-3. I know, but but I tell you, Jason, I, I know with numerology and all of these things, I mean, when I hear people talk about numerology, it doesn't matter what numbers are given, they can come up with saying, well, that means that and that means right. this and whatever. Right, right, right. It, I think it's uh, a bit over the top. At the same time, I know the forces behind these operations are very aware of dates and numbers and because it keeps repeating all the time, yeah. so for sure it's there. Yeah. We have the murder of Gianni Versace, who is a, a fashion icon and a, a major power in the fashion industry, who was shot by, I don't really understand this case, but sort of like a jealous lover type of thing. Well, I but think here, it was a guy he was, had just met and took home. You tell me, that's the official story, but here the crime scene photos are identical. Hmm. So I don't know, w w is that just a coincidence or huh. is that yet another of these operations? Well, when you say the crime Post scene photos are identical, what two crime scenes were those? Say again, please. I don't understand what you meant by the crime scene photos were identical on the previous slide. Those two on the left, but where were those both from the Versace murder? They were from, from the Versace murder, but when I'm saying identical to all of the other images from ah. all of the other alleged attacks and suicide right. bombs. Just with one blood shoe sitting shoe. there. Yeah. Possible murder of Prince, photos that connects that. These shoes. I, I, I'm, I'm just speculating in this area. 
Yeah. I'm going in all different direction at the moment here. We have the very famous uh, uh, cover photo from the Abbey Road album from the yes. Beatles. People have been bringing that up in the chat as well. The the shoe, Paul McCartney without shoes, indicating that he actually died in 1966 in a car crash and was replaced by somebody that is referred to as Fall. You can hear um, George Harrison in several different interviews is referring to him as Fall, not Paul, but Fall. And so many, I mean, the thick books that have been written about this whole mystery around the, the Beatles being yeah. a product of the Tavistock Institute and that Paul was actually replaced by the current version. Fall. I'm fascinated by that story, Ole. We should do an episode in the future just about that. For sure, anytime you want. Yeah. And here, Osho, we were talking about the, the founder of Nike and so on, and Osho was a an Indian religious leader who came to Oregon with the intention of, of out in the wilderness, build a city, sort of an Osho city, uh, and that led to a, a, almost like a war zone in Oregon, way out in the countryside. Mm -hmm. And the two parts in the war was the Osho uh, party, if you want to call them that, and then the local po uh, population led by the founder of the Nike shoe. Mm. Then, which I, I have no idea if this is of any connection, but I just found it interesting. And on the latest book about Osho, what is on the cover, it's the exact shoe here, even with the color code that is being used now in these operations, where the magenta is the current color that goes in most of the operations in Europe, and the purple in US, mm. and orange also. So. Nike, 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 what is up with Nike? Yeah. I mean, I refer to them as the shoes from absolute hell. Look at these, these are, these are uh, models that you can buy. With blood they are made like this. Wow. One is called Nike Crime Scene. The other one is called Nike Crime Lab. Uh, then you have here, that's Nike Isis. And the other one is also wow. Nike Isis. And this model was released in France on the exact same same day as the Bataclan massacre on November the 13th, Halloween, in France. Hmm. This blood spatter, they, they come like that. They even come with blood underneath the sole. Wow. And so look, look at this is a Nike poster. It's a crime scene with blood and a shoe, bloodstained shoe. And look at the text down below. You may not survive the blast, but your shoes will. Nike. It's crazy. What the hell is that? And so, while looking for all of these images for months and months, one day I was surfing around and I find this image, and I thought, oh, that could be, a, that could look interesting. So I clicked on it, and anyone who who wants to do the same, just uh, copy this image and go on Google search, image search, put it in, search uh, on an image, and when you click on it, guess where it takes you. Where? CIA, what? That, that is the, in, we, you, you go back here, it's, it's uh, connected to the World Factbook, and it says CIA underneath. You, you click on the image, and boom, there it is. The World Factbook, CIA, their own website. Wow, people's so minds think, are blown right now, Ole. I, I believe that this is a breakthrough. I really think that this is a major step forward because if they have been using, if it's the same force behind all of these ones, which I would suggest, otherwise, how would it be possible with the exact same images from all of these different countries, all of these different locations, alleged attacks, alleged suicide bombers that we're being fed with all of this fear, 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 fear. If it's the same force behind it, with the same agenda, with the same symbols used, with the same photographers involved, and so on, what does that tell you? It tells you that we are being told this war, this world is filled with terrorists and uh, horrific events and blood and bombs and suicide uh, fanatics and whatever. And I would say, maybe not at all. 
Maybe not at all. I was I was in Tehran during the war between Iraq and Iran, and I was it was a very tense time. But at the same time, even in wars, you know, like during the war, you got normal days as well, even though there were bombings at night and so on. But uh, one day I was walking down the street in Tehran, and at that time there was more or less no foreigners uh, left in Tehran. All the embassies, everybody had left. And uh, I was walking down the street. It was a beautiful day. And I saw there was a little commotion down down the road. So I, I started walking down there. There was a small little group of people. And I saw it was a film crew. They were not Iranian. Uh, so there was a foreign film crew. Famous and then scene. there was like eight, ten teenagers. They were given American flags. The film crew helped them uh, put them on fire. What? And then uh, they were standing right in front of the camera, screaming, Mar Bar America, Mar Bar America, death to America, death to America, wow. right in front of the camera. And then they were filming that for like a few minutes. Then I saw the crew pay the teenagers. They were really happy. They wow. took off. And that was showing us that Iran is totally crazy. They hate America. They want to kill us. No. There were some teenagers that was paid to wave a flag and scream some words and then could go and buy an ice cream. That was what happened. Who was paying them, though? The c film crew, whoever I mean, they were. where were they from? from? U.S.? I don't know. England? I don't know, but I'm sure that that footage would be used in the, in the West somewhere yeah. and, and being spread around, sold to different news agencies as, look here what's going on. Because you have seen images like that Many times, I'm sure. There was another time. There was uh, it was in the green uh, the green revolutions, and there was uh, I think it was in Algeria. There were this uh, big riot in a in a town square, a city square in one of the cities, and I had some people that I knew that were down there. So I contacted them, and said, please go there and see what's going on, because here we're being told that massive riots and uh, you know. Uh, the police is there and tear gas and all. They went down there. It was absolutely dead. It was absolutely dead. So what were we being told? And even uh, I remember one time, I think it was in, uh, there was some riots in Mexico and they CNN showed, oh, look at this. You know, they were running around with flags, screaming, shouting and that. Turned out that it was the wrong flag. It was Indian flags. They got that one wrong. And, but they were just using the same footage. Hmm. A lot of that it's, goes there, on. There's a, we're being played here. We're being played here. That's the thing. Yeah. And so I, was, I did a conference uh, last weekend uh, via Skype. Uh, it's the Dark uh, Truth Conference in New York. Oh. And one of the other speakers was Barbara Honecker. And I showed a similar presentation like this. And after that, she sent me a photo of her slippers that she had prepared. And she had written like this, we know you did it, and we're not afraid anymore. You know, so if you Using look the at shoes this, against them. If, if they have used this as the main fear trigger for so many years, if we now expose the shoe so that millions of people will start seeing the shoes everywhere and laugh at it, maybe give them the finger at the same time, but laugh instead of going into fear mode because it's like a business card. It just shows, there we go again. Aha, it's you again. Hello, dear Mr. CIA and Mossad and MI6. Oh, once again, it's you. So nice to see you. We're not buying into this crap anymore. Right. And you turn it around so that we, instead of going into fear mode, start laughing and release ourselves, break the spell of fear and become free. That's the whole idea. Yeah. You know, Ole, Tyler in the Dome on YouTube is saying that JFK knew about this. I think very likely this is what JFK was talking about when he said we're opposed by a monolithic conspiracy around the world. Totally. Totally. And that's why they killed him. Hmm. One of the reasons. Yeah. So now you're showing an array of books that people can get if they go to lightonconspiracies.com. Ole, of course, is an author. He's a researcher. 
He is one of the world's experts on political assassinations and identifying false flag terror operations. And you can purchase any of his books and uh, books written by some of our other friends, including Cody Snodgrass, if you just go to lightonconspiracies.com. Is that so, it Jason, for the Jason, PowerPoint Jason. there, Ole? Sorry? Is that, is that it for the PowerPoint there? That's it for the PowerPoint. Thank oh. you so much for your patience. And no, no, it's riveting. It's I think everyone is always pleased to see your newest research. Can we switch back to your video on Skype? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not doing it. I'm trying to get it to stop share screen, but I think it doesn't it's want stopped. to. You just got to turn on your camera, I think. Because I've just got I'm a still picture of you. No. Well, that's all right. Oh, there you are. Good to see you again. There well, I am. Ole, it's an amazingly comprehensive presentation that you've put together. Obviously, I mean, how many shoes could they possibly have at these events? It's just bizarre. And Nike, the fact that it's always Nike. So I'm going to be seeing Quinn Michaels later today. Quinn actually worked for Nike as a programmer for many years, and now he is a researcher who is pursuing the Process Church, the 9-3 Society, all of these occult sort of things. His son was kidnapped by the child's own mother, who is a part of this cult. And uh, the fact that these Nike shoes are showing up so frequently and so prominently in the photographs, it just seems beyond coincidence. And then linking to the CIA like that, it's really amazing. What can I say? I think, uh, I mean, anyone, please send, if you do, I mean, people I'm sure will find hundreds of shoes out there that I haven't found. So please send them to me, info at Light on Conspiracies, so I can just add to my collection of shoes. Right. I wish I was uh, one of these shoe fetishists or whatever it's called, but uh, I would also very much like people to contact Nike and say, what the hell? Is it all about? Are you up to one yeah. here or boycott them? Boycott yeah. them. Same with Toyota. Here, I mean, ISIS, you show me an image of ISIS where there's a vehicle and it's not a Toyota. Hmm. It doesn't exist. Wow. So, dear Mr. Toyota, as well, what is going on? This is a, this is said to be the worst threat to human, uh, human civilization ever. And the only car they're driving around in is your car <laughs> what's going on so somebody actually did that they contacted toyota and said who has bought these cars yeah and they said we haven't sold them to isis uh, the orders came via the u.s state department whoa very interesting whoa yeah and also uh, isis had their headquarters in in arizona uh, if i've been informed correctly uh, they had uh, the headquarters there. John McCain of State, Arizona. And John McCain was photographed with the Free Syrian Army in Syria. But this is the, the thing, Jason. We are told that it's in Yemen or Syria or so, but it's always in deserts, like in Arizona. Hmm. There was even oh. one, one, one truck where they were testing out the new machine guns uh, and on the door of the truck, it was a pickup truck, there was an American oil company logo on it. Halliburton, perhaps? <laughs> I, I wish. No, but no, it's a smaller company. But <laughs> I believe that so many of these photos, when you look at photos from ISIS, can you see any background? Can you see anything that shows oh, they you where they are? Oh, could shot in the desert in Arizona, you're saying. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I'm saying. That is what I'm saying. That is what I'm suggesting. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. Hmm. So, Ole, would you say that all we have, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself? And, and these operations are designed to foment fear and keep everyone sort of desperate? And No, absolutely not. We should be very aware of these forces because they are very dangerous to us. Hmm. People can definitely get uh, injured. But you're fearless in doing it. In doing it because fear handicaps us. You know, it, it may it paralyzes us.
Right. And But you, I think it's very important to become aware that fear is only in the mind. Fear is not something you can hold or, or reach out and grab. It's only in the mind and it's only about something that has not yet happened. Right. So it's connected to the future. It is not yet, even if somebody aims a gun at you, there's no real reason to be afraid. Maybe it's made of rubber. Maybe it's not loaded. There's no, I, that's what I'm saying. The minute you see the, okay, the bullet is coming my way and I don't have time to die or duck. Okay, problem. Let me start fearing the future. But until then, let's release ourselves from the fear because that is how they control us. Right. This is why they try to to pour this, this sewage over us of fear porn to hold us down, right. to not be the, the awful individuals that we are because we're so, oh God, oh God, oh God, it's too much, I can't handle it, oh, the world is in... But in, if you ask me, I look out, out there, if I look through the black box in front of me, it looks like an absolute horrific place to live. Hmm. It's so true. what is the real one? Yeah. Now, Ole, I just want to ask you briefly, you mentioned when you show the photograph of the mountain of shoes from the Holocaust in World War II that they were alleged victims. Do you believe that there was no Holocaust in Germany and that Jews weren't killed there? What? Ah, oh, the classic ambush question. This I'm not trying to ambush you. I'm all. just asking about that no, no. statement. I know, Jason. I know that. I know that. I did a two-hour interview with Red Eyes Creations. Uh, it's called Making Critical Thinking Illegal. I would very much like to refer to that one, okay. uh, where I go through very, very carefully through uh, all the, the facts and just compare it to the logistic possibilities of carrying these things out. Hmm. If you ask me, it doesn't match up anywhere near the official story at all. And I have, I have no interest in proving anything. I'm just going there, looking at it, right. and seeing what the hell is going on. And then also, when you look at the way this is being used, because they, they don't have a lot of weapons against somebody like myself, because uh, it's not easy to attack me, because normally I just show things that anyone can find, but I put it together in a way that, have a look, Make yeah. up your own mind, and so on. So the thing that they, the, the last effort they have is the Holocaust denier. That's the trump card they have, that they pull out to destroy individuals. And I mean, I don't know any Jewish people that I know of. I'm not a hater of anything. I'm tracking down criminals. Well, I don't care if they're, <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Good I mean, the you. only reason I ask is because I, none of my relatives were in it. My immediate grandparents, you know, both on my mother's side and father's side, fled Europe and came to the United States and grew up in Brooklyn. But I have had multiple family friends who I would see at Jewish holidays, at Passover, Seders, etc., who had the tattoo on their arms from being of in course. the internment camps. No, 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 but, but the, de the camps were there. The camps were there. But were there labor camps or were they death camps? Were the gas uh, chambers there? Were they even connected with the well, chimneys? Well, obviously, Could the people that I logistic? knew were in labor camps because they remained alive in the 80s and the 90s, and, you know, I wouldn't... No, 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 the, there were thousands of camps. There were thousands of camps. But even though what we're being told, even people that were in the camps, were they being told the real truth Got it. of what actually went down? And if you look at, it seems like a lot of these things uh, was created right after the war uh, at the Yalta conference where Stalin and Churchill and uh, Roosevelt met together, started splitting up Europe and so on. That is where the massive impact came of these alleged dead death camps, where they said, well, suddenly they returned into death camps with but when you look at the logistics of how they say all of these thousands of people were killed and that they take, took the bodies, put them in the in the gas yes, ovens. Right. And, but a body is not easy to dispose of. 
you go to a crematory, a modern one, it takes a certain time nowadays with a super efficient, very high uh, temperature oven to dis dispose of a body because there's so much fluid and water and so on inside. Right. And here we're being told that they that they even stack them like two, three on top of each other, but the ovens doesn't even allow that. Hmm. And the, when you look at the official number of six million, if you really check out the numbers now, they're down to, as far as I know, 248,000. Hmm. Well, still a huge number. Perhaps this down is to a topic for us to explore another but day. If Sorry. you're up for it, if yeah, you're up I for mean, it, but this is... It's very controversial, obviously. This is... No, it's, a, it's the perfect way of, of committing suicide as a, a public figure because it's just like swallowing a hand grenade. Thank you, goodbye, crew world, going down. Oh, God. We don't want that. I always enjoy having you on, Ole, and I, I love the way you connect these dots, as you've said, in ways that other people simply do not. My guest right now, of course, is Ole Damagard, one of the best-known authors and researchers in the area of political assassinations and identifying false flags. And Ole is putting together information that I don't see anywhere else, connecting the uh, photographic representations of shoes to some of these conspiracies around the world. And you can learn more about Ole's research and purchase his books and support his research at his website, lightonconspiracies.com. Ole, was there anything else you wanted to share before we wrap it up for the day? I would very much like to say, please look out for shoes, Nike shoes, mm. possible bicycles, that they're replacing the shoe with now, because I've seen that the more focus we put on the shoes, they, it's losing power for, from them, so they need to replace it with another uh, trigger of the subconscious so they started combining if if I'm correct with crashed bicycles in the background right. because the thing is they need subtle symbols because if it, if it was like red umbrellas or something like that if we saw red umbrellas hundreds of them we would start seeing there's a lot of red umbrellas here aren't there? Yeah. but shoes are so just there mm. that you don't really notice them so look out for the shoes look out for color codes it's orange right now, and it's purple, deep purple sometimes yeah. in the U.S., where it's almost like a, it's a, I would suggest that what we're looking at is like a, a secret communication system that's from people in the know where they can communicate with these colors without paper trails, without phone calls that can be tracked. Uh, or letters or whatever. So through the colors, they show this is ours, this is ours. Also, mm -hmm. for instance, um, a shooting takes place on, at the, on the press conference. The mayor steps forward and say, we stand uh, here in sympathy of the victim. The tie, the color of the tie, yeah. purple. Yeah. Then the politician in the Senate that stands up for gun control, same kind of color combination. Or it can be the person next to him with color, uh, purple hair, or they stand in front of a purple background, or an orange one. So be aware of these colors. Right. Uh, I think you're really on to something with that, Ole. I think there's a lot of encoded messages that are going out in a lot of different ways over YouTube videos and public broadcasts like that. And I agree with what you're saying there. The people that are doing this want to create uh, a situation where they can openly testify, well, I never emailed with that person, I never had any phone calls, I never had any direct communications with them, and it's true, so they're not lying and they're not perjuring themselves or having any of the liars tells that they might have, but yet they are still able to communicate sometimes even very complex messages uh, around a network of possibly many, many operatives. Exactly. So I, I, my intention is, in a totally non-violent way, is to take away the power from them through these symbols by exposing yeah. this is how it's done. Mm -hmm. It's meant only for them, but as soon as we become aware of it, yeah. millions will be able to see it, and that takes away the secrecy. Yes. I believe in transparency. They rule through secrecy. Yes. They rule through secrecy. So let's just let the fog 
lift. You know, we've been yeah. we've been tricked for so many years and decades, and criminals can only work in the dark, in the right. shadows. That's where they're efficient, where we don't see what they're up to. If we pull the curtain, they're without power. Like cockroaches, so, you turn on the light and they scurry. And Ole is shining a light on conspiracies, as always. And of course, Ole, we've heard from JFK that uh, the very word secrecy is repugnant in an open and free society. So I have to thank you for your ongoing effort to expose these criminals, and we're going to keep doing that. Ole, I look forward to having you back on the show very soon. I want to wish you a very happy Thursday. Everyone is looking forward to the Inspector General's report, and uh, we'll be looking at that later today. Thank you so much for joining me today, Ole. Everyone, please go and visit lightonconspiracies.com. Purchase the books, become a member, sign up for the newsletter, and uh, let's show Ole our support, and you can get all of your latest information right there on lightonconspiracies.com. Ole, I'll speak to you very soon, my friend. Lovely to have you, as always, and uh, have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Very good, and thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you later.